Hi everybody, welcome back. In this lecture, we'll see Docker volumes with demonstration. By default, any data generated on container at runtime is deleted along with the container. I mean, the default volume of container is associated with Docker container lifecycle. So when container created, it creates the file system. And when container is terminated, it also deletes the file system. This behavior is okay for stateless applications like web applications. But this behavior is not good for stateful applications like database applications. If we are running database applications on Docker container, at runtime, your application is going to ingest, insert lots of data into database that is by default stored on container file system. Okay that is gone that data is deleted when the container is also deleted for some reasons now even if container crashes we want to retain the data so that we can spin up a new container and start this new container from where the previously crashed container left okay let's go with demonstration i am on amazon linux machine where docker is installed and running let's create a container and see how its volume behaves so that's the container running okay we are inside the container Let's create a folder. Let's create a file. So remember this folder and file, they all created after container started. Correct. So this folder and file doesn't exist with Docker image. Let me exit. Now let me kill this container. Let me give container ID. So container got terminated. Let's go and spin up a new container. Fine. Let's get into this container. I'm sorry. The container ID is new. Now, See, there is no folder with name hurry. So obviously what happened, whatever folder and file we created that was on the previous container and that is deleted along with the container. We are spinning up a new container with same image of course, but that folder doesn't exist. This is the problem. So if we are running stateful applications like databases, we need to persist data on the host so that when we spin up a new container in the situations like our existing container crashed we can point back to the folder which is on the host and continue from where our previous container stopped all right let's spin up containers using volume and see how they work I am creating new volume with name Hari. Let's inspect Hari volume and see where exactly it's storing data when I uh, put data into this volume. On my host, this volume is actually storing information in this path. Remember, this is the host path. Now, I am creating a container using hyphen v which is for volume 
volume name that's the volume name we created and it's actually storing data on the host in this location and I'm mounting that onto the container folder on container under root hurry data that's the folder name on the container so any data inside container in this path is stored in this volume on the host okay now let's get into this container look there is hurry data folder created hurry data folder was not originally created inside the container but because of this iPhone V and this option it automatically created this folder for us let's cd into that folder let's create a file okay let's put some dummy text into the file do ls and cat the file exists and some content in the file also exists let me exit from the container now let me terminate that container okay what happens to the data we won't lose data because the data is actually stored in this location do cat info.txt file exists and also the data exists now let's spin up a new container but make sure we are pointing this we are pointing our volume on the host to the folder on the container let's get into the container ls our data exists that is how volumes work in docker now i will show one more interesting use case of using duck volume i have taken a sample dockerized application we are extending from a base image httpd which is apache server on Apache this location is the deployment folder if we want to deploy any applications on this Apache we need to keep our application code in this location and in the next line I'm copying index.html file from my local host into docker image then I will create container and I can test it and let's say if I want to do any changes to this file I need to rebuild the image, delete old container, then spin up new container, test it. That's obviously a lengthy process. It takes a lot of time to do that whenever there is a new change to be tested. First of all, let's see the process I explained. Later on, I will show you how to simplify this process with help of Docker volumes. Let's build docker image. Okay, the port is already in use. Let me remove old containers. Let's take public IP of Docker host. 
hit it on 8080. Yes, we see our application. Of development activity, if I want to do changes to my code, let's say I want to change color to uh, green, I want to make changes to my code, then if I want to test it, I have to build new Docker image. Then, so I need to remove old container. And I need to spin up a new container which has our latest code. Now our code is working, but when I make changes to the code, I don't want to do that lengthy process like creating new Docker image, deleting old container, spinning up new container and testing it. I want to simplify this development process with help of Docker volumes. So first let me delete this container. Okay. Then let me set up a workspace on my host where I am going to do changes to my code. Let me go back. Let's create a folder, my code. Okay, CD my code. All right, so I want to make this folder as my development workspace. I will mount this folder onto Docker container under Apache's deployment folder so that. Whenever I make changes to the file on my host, it reflects inside Docker container so that I don't have to build new image and spin up new containers to test the code changes I'm making as part of development. Okay. Let's run docker run hyphen D. Iphen V, okay. See that my code, earlier we created a volume and I gave the volume name, but this time I'm not giving volume name. Instead of that, I'm giving the host path, otherwise the path on my host. Okay, the folder on my host mounting onto the folder on Docker container. Run that. Test it, it's in green. Now let's say I want to make it red again without rebuilding image and redeploying the container. See the changes I'm making here directly reflects inside the container under this path. Let's do a refresh. Of course, yeah. You see those changes reflecting inside the container. This approach will save lots of time and drastically improves development productivity. Okay guys, that's all from this video. Thanks for watching. See you again in next video.